Hi everybody and welcome to another edition of By Gosh Quilting. I am Jane and I'd like to just um, talk with you a little bit today. I thought I'd do a little bit of a chatty video and um, show you uh, what I've been working on. Remember to actually show you pictures of other items I've been working on. Um, show you how I um, arrange or what I do when I'm working on a project. Uh, to keep kind of track of it and you'll see why when you see what I'm working on. Um, also, I wanted to just go over a little bit, um, I'll show you some things I bought and talk a little bit about men's shirts. Now, I follow Kathy Martin of uh, the Catbird Quilts and uh, she opened up a whole new world for me with fabric. I have been going a little bit crazy. Um, I will kind of give you a glimpse around my room here just to kind of show you what I mean. Um, I started buying, here we go, I'm going to just kind of show you here, uh, fabric all over the place here. I also like the Wizard of Oz. So I kind of went a little bit crazy when I first started um, working on quilts and um, I just was buying fabric all over the place, all kinds of it. Uh, not 100% sure what I was going to do with it. Then I found the three yard quilts and uh, started making a lot of those. And, um, but needless to say, uh, all of a sudden before I knew it, I had a lot of money invested in fabric and um, did not make a whole lot out of it. And um, I think I was too busy buying, um, <laughs> which is fun. I like color. Um, so I... Um, I needed to slow that down just a little bit and found Kathy Martin, uh, found the cat bird, or the cat of cat bird quilts and started finding the love that is men's shirts. So, um, I thought I'd start a little bit about that first and just kind of show you what I have here. Um, I have a few more shirts. Sorry. I'm trying to work out how I want to do the videos and stuff. You see, I have a lot of paper here too. I also scrapbook. Um, there's my iron, my thread. But I thought I'd kind of show you a little bit more here about um, shirts. So sorry about that. So the I have a pile here in front of me of shirts I'm going to be breaking down that I haven't shown as of yet. And I'll, I'll kind of show you um, the, the shirts and then I'll show you some that I've broken down and what I do with everything because I try not to waste any little bit of the shirt. Now I primarily, if I'm purchasing shirts myself in general, I try to get an extra large or an extra, extra large or larger. Um, and so that works out really well. I have a son who wears like a, anywhere between a two X and a four X. And whenever he's ready for new clothes, he just, um, brings me over a pile of his shirts and, um, I break them down and it's really nice because uh, he buys thrifted shirts. He does not like to pay full price for a shirt. So he gets his shirt after someone else has already had it. Then he uses it and then I get it. So, um, and then I break it down and use it in some quilts. And that's, I really like that. I think it's really sustainable. Um, there's so much fast fashion out there right now that I think that this is an excellent, excellent way to take care of it. Um, previously, what I had done with a lot of the men's shirts that I had, because I actually have three boys and a husband, um, was sell my shirts once I was done with them. I would give some to Goodwill, but I'd also try to sell on Poshmark. Um, recently, I decided that I was not going to be selling at least men's shirts very much on Poshmark and decided, you know what? I'm going to break those babies down. So, um, I would say that of my shirts, um, I, up until something that's coming, I had never paid more than $4 for a, a men's shirt XL or XXL and above. Um, and including the ones I'm going to be showing you, but some of these are not all, some of these are mediums and stuff like that too, because they're shirts I had, but, um, uh, yeah, I have some Salvation Armies around me and I usually go in whatever colors on sale is the, the amount that I'll get. Um, what I meant about not paying more than $5 is, um, I recently went on Poshmark and, um, again, Kathy Martin, uh, she does, uh, she keeps finding these denim and flower shirts and I just love the prints and I'm like, I want some denim and flower prints. And I went on Poshmark and I was, I found a seller that was selling, 
a whole bunch of shirts that were 100% cotton. That's the other thing. I will only buy linen or 100% cotton. Um, and they were $6 a piece. And, um, or no, I, that's not true. They were anywhere between $6 and three or four dollars a piece and when I totaled everything in with shipping because it was one rate for shipping I think I bought five shirts and um got it and they'll be shipped to my home and it ends up averaging about six dollars a shirt so it's a little bit more than I typically pay but uh when you get an XL or XXL shirt or bigger you usually get at least a yard of fabric now it's not an all nice put together piece of fabric but it's usually at least a yard so without further ado I'm uh, just going to show you a couple shirts here yet that I'm going to be breaking down and what neat stuff you can get out of men's shirts so I have this here and this is almost it's almost like a oh I'm sorry my my blinds are kind of let's see if I turn a light on that help not really but I'll try to put it up next to the camera here I got a um let's see what well actually let me do this a little different okay there we go this is a little more true to color so um this is one of the shirts I'm going it's a little bit brighter than this is showing up but this is just again 100% cotton a nice kind of uh fuchsia purple plaid that I think is really pretty I'll be breaking that down I have just a solid white here um it's a kind of a cream white. And the nice thing is you break these down too and you also get buttons, lots of buttons. And you'll find some really unique ones on some of the shirts. Next shirt I'm breaking down is this one. This one's really interesting. It's almost like a satiny material. And like inside the cuffs have this beautiful fabric in here. And that is also up here in the uh, collar. And um, just a nice dark button there. Um, let me get the next one here. I'm breaking down this. This is just a blue plaid. You find a lot of blue, a lot of blues. Men's wear, men wear a lot of blue shirts. So here's that. Like I said, you'll see a lot of blue here. Oops, sorry, here. We have this one here. This one's fun. It's got some green detail in here so I thought that one was really neat to grab and similar same company of shirt I have this one here with the orange I absolutely adore orange so that one's nice and lastly here I have this like uh, red, white, and blue. So these are the shirts I have in line to break down. And then I will show you, um, I'll stop for a second and I'm gonna show you what I've already broken down and what I kind of do with them. Okay, here we are by my drawer of broken down shirts. What I do is I wash them, then I cut them, then I iron them, and then I put them in here. I've ran out of room, but it's just amazing. I'm gonna try to pull the drawer out here without knocking it out i have um so i have all these fun colors here there's this pink there's a this is kind of a minty there's a black back here uh striped and then some blue and yellow back there then oh i'm gonna fix my drawer here a little bit there's this green some more red and that's got a little bit of tan in it a lot of blues show you what I got back here some peaches and this goes all the way back here there's some blues and then we have here some striped some solids some fun I love this one it's like a beachy print so we have those there and then I'm going to bring you over here to uh, some of the ones I have to iron yet so I have a lot of those so what I do is I break them down and I do, um, I cut everything down. I don't make them into squares. I had done that originally with some of mine. And then I found that I didn't um, want to use the squares. And uh, then I wish I wouldn't have cut up the shirts. So now I leave them raw, so to speak. Um, so we have these all here. I take the buttons off. And then I'll show you what I do with some of the things. Now, I keep them in pieces 
like I said, these have to be ironed yet. And, um, and I keep the pockets with them. So we have these here. Um, here, I've been breaking down and not ironing lately. I have um, some over here. Now what I do is with the smaller pieces, I put them in my scrap bin. And then what I take is anything seams and stuff like that, double sewn, I do this too. I cut them all down and I keep them because I like to tie up, when I'm working on quilts, I like to tie the fabric in little bundles and this just works perfect. And then I'm not, not using something there. And then lastly, I have one more messy little bin here that has some more shirts in it that I have to go over yet. So we have that there. Okay, so I'm holding up something here. I'm going to just go over um, what I'm currently working on. And, um, and well, one of the things I just finished, I'm going to put a picture of right here. Okay, and that's a blanket I used um, using some materials and some shirts. I was going to show that last video, and I totally forgot to add the clip. Well, have my editor add the clip, so to speak. That's my son. But this is what I've been working on lately, and I got this a year ago when I was just very first beginning to quilt. Um, I wanted to make a table runner. I had my husband with me. We were at a place. They had all their Christmas fabrics on sale. I've already showed the fabrics that I was going to use, so I picked out some fabrics to use for this. And I finally decided that after I made my last quilt um, that I would start on this. This was called Wave Runner um, by Whirligig Designs here. And I had no idea what I was getting myself into when I did this, um, especially for being a beginning quilter. Um, it was interesting. Um, so you get instructions here. Oh, there's my seam ripper. And um, it starts out all, all nice. Um, as I'm looking at it, it kind of gives you the um, you know best results. Use a fourth inch seam. Tells you how to cut, and you have seven different fabrics. So I start cutting up everything, and basically what it comes down to is you get all kinds of strips. You get what 27 strips, and then you have. Then the fun starts. You have to cut up your strips, and I'm not going to show too much of this here, into different segments. And then when you get them all cut, and what it what you had to do was you had to cut, you had to um, take a row that you had, and you'd have, so you did seven, a row, a big piece of fabric with seven rows in it. And then you had to cut them down, and I'll kind of show you here. Here's a piece yet. So, oh, the sun. Let me try this here. Here, we'll go over here. So what you do is I'd cut a piece out, and it would be like um, seven of these, you know, seven rows down. And then you'd cut off what your strip you were supposed to need, you know, one or two or whatever strips. And then you had to pick off the bottom strip and then pick a different color and add it to the top. And then you'd have to cut what you needed from that. And again, then next time, take the thing off. So you'd end up with a bunch of little strips. Just right here. Like this. I'm just going to show you a couple here. There's one. There's one. And so on and so forth. So... I again this was way more involved than I had ever done before but so I got these strips all together and at first you take the strips then and you do one big big section you sew it together here and it turns out looking like this so you can see here it's got kind of all different the strips are all different sizes I got a you know, obviously clear some of this off of here and everything. But so it looks like this for now. This is half of it. So I have to add the other strips together and then I will have um, a huge big table runner that I just have to quilt it or put, you know, cut backing and quilt it. And I think it's funny, they don't tell you what size to make the backing. But so I have that there. And then I'll show you kind of how I keep track of everything because now what I do when I have the strips is I've pinned. So I, I don't like to waste anything. So you'll see I take selvages and I cut them up 
and then I pin, I put the letter on them for the strip and then pin the selvage on. So I try not to waste any of the fabric I get. So here's another thing that I do, and I'll just get that here. Okay, I just got done filming a whole bunch and realized that I did not have the camera on or, or recording. So um, here's just some of the things I picked up lately, and I'm so sorry about this. I'm trying to find a good angle to film here, but one of the things I got were these colored pencils. And I got these because I also got this. I got some graph paper. I really like figuring out sizes um, when I'm making things. And so I thought it would be fun to maybe try to come up with designs for my own quilts and uh, be able to do the math and everything on by having them on this quilt paper. So I got these. Um, also from Target, that was from Target, I got this new ruler. I like the Omni Grips. I don't have anything like this. It's just a triangle. I'm just going to give you a better shot of it here. Um, and I thought that would be nice. I like the Omni Grips because they grip better. Um, I also got this four and a half by four and a half inch square one. And these are really nice. Um, I, I got, the, like I said, I got them from Target. Who knew that Target did sewing supplies and notions? I did not know that, but they do. They have a, a good amount online. So I got these items from there. The colored pencils, I believe, are from Hobby Lobby. Then I put in an order at Shabby Fabri Fabrics, and I got a jelly roll here. This is the Sweet Liberty jelly roll, and it's kind of like a patriotic roll with also some floral. I've seen it on a lot of quilt channels lately, so I won't open it all up yet. But um, yeah, I'm excited to make something out of that. I haven't done a jelly roll quilt in a while, so I thought that would be fun. I got some uh, marking chalk. I have never used it before. I've seen some people use it, and I thought it looked pretty interesting, so I picked up some of that. I got some thread, and I didn't find any names on here, but the, I believe this is 50 weight cotton. And I got this lavender color, some fuchsia pink, which I think is really fun, and some teal, almost a Tiffany blue, a little dark for that, but I thought it was really pretty. And then of course, oh, sorry about that, I also bought some um, fun fabrics. So I got um, a yard of this. I thought this was really pretty. Let's see if this... Um, I know sometimes you ask me names, so let's see. I'm trying to look for the selvage on this that would tell me the name. And I am not seeing anything on this. Um, this was, it was on Shabby Fabrics, and it was on sale, so I picked it up. And then there was a matching one. And that was right here. thought this was really pretty. Will this have a name on it? I am not seeing anything. So I don't know if I just got cut. Oh, here we go. Here we go. I saw it. Here we go. Well, I don't have the name on it. But I got two yards. These are on sale on Jabby Fabrics. You probably could find them now if you go yourself. Then I got... These are really pretty. I love purples and greens and pinks. You'll see. So I got this. I got a yard of it. I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet. I just think it is absolutely gorgeous. Um, what is this? Cottage Boutique. And um, I love that. And I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this yet, but... I did decide I'm going to make a three-yard quilt out of some other fabrics from that um, grouping. I had this. Again, love my pinks and purples and greens. And then this. And then bringing out the green. I have that. Kind of put those together. And then for the backing, I got this. So I thought that would go really nice together. So I'm going to make that into a nice three-yard quilt. So there you have it for today. Kind of a little chatty video, kind of letting you know how I keep track of my quilts or projects that I make. Um, showing you what I do with the 
uh, men's shirts and uh, a little bit on that anyways, how I pick and decide what I'm working on or what I'm currently breaking apart, um, seeing some of my stash from there. And like I said, it's, it's, you can find them so inexpensively and it's hundred percent cotton shirts. I'm, I'm just really pleased with having, um, been given that idea and being able to use them. Um, got to show you some of my new things and show you what I'm working on. I'll probably be starting a quilt sometime soon too. Haven't done that yet. I'm also, um, my husband might start filming me doing some things. And if he does, then I'll be able to show more hands-on on what I'm doing. And the only reason I d would do that, I mean, one of the only reasons I think it might be helpful is, um, I'm brand new and not that I want to teach anybody bad habits, but, um, I would like to kind of show people what, what I do, how I've moved through things, um, little tips and tricks I might've learned. Um, I don't, I think there's a lot of wrong ways to do things, but there's also a lot of ways to do things right, but in your own way. Um, one of the things I, I used to beat myself up, up about imperfections, but I learned a long time ago while scrapbooking that um, sometimes the little imperfections are what makes something perfect uh, for the individual I'm giving it to, or for me, um, we aren't perfect. Um, and sometimes everybody needs a little imperfection. And so um, I truly believe that. And I really take that to heart while quilting because um, especially while I'm learning to quilt my quilts, wow, that's been a process. So um, yeah, I if that's something that interests you, let me know um, if you'd kind of like to see me kind of start from do start to finish on something, I'll find a way to set it up. I am trying to learn what works best. I'm not um a hundred percent sure how to do this. I've been watching a lot of other quilters on YouTube. Um, I see everybody kind of has their own little style, their own little things that they show. So I'm trying to figure out what will work best for me and for my channel. I do really want to thank you so much for watching though. And um until next time, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Thanks for watching. Bye.